Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eco. Well, we've moved up to the Logan River here in Logan Canyon where something is missing. Giant salmon flies, once beloved by fly fishermen and of course the fish that eat them, have been missing here on the Logan River since the 1960s. So where did they go? USU student reporter Robinson Miles digs into the mystery of the missing salmon fly. Rushing water, bags of tackle, tying flies, casting over and over again. It's an art form because it requires more finesse than normal fishing. It's the way you cast, the way you're interacting with the current, and the way you're following the fish. I see it as just a way to connect with nature more. I'm a big nature lover, and so I just love to be out in it. And they're not alone. The rivers might be a little bit more crowded, but I think it's an awesome thing. There are more and more humans fishing on the Logan River, but one species isn't there anymore. Terranarsis californica. Commonly known as the salmon fly. It gets very large and establishes very large populations, so there's lots of food available for trout. But salmon flies no longer hatch in Logan Canyon. We don't have a time machine, so we can't go back and check about why the species disappeared from the Logan River. All we know is that it did. There are different theories why. Aerial spraying of pesticides, chemical spills, are pandemics, but it's hard to imagine those hypotheses being correct though because other species survived just fine. The Division of Wildlife Resources says the salmon fly extinction in the Logan River might be connected to salt, like the kind snowplows spread during the winter storm earlier this month. These salmon flies are growing to full size here in Blacksmith Fort Canyon where there's less traffic, so there's a lower level of salt in the water. Because of the year-to-year -year spreading of salt on the highway going up the Logan River, we could have lost this species. Oh, this is a good one. USU researchers test salmon flies' resilience to different levels of salt. The salmon fly being in only really low salt streams, we would then wonder, is this fly intolerant to salt? Can it not live in streams of high salt, or is that just a coincidence? a good one. Researchers collect salmon flies from Blacksmith Fork. If we're losing that species, maybe due to salt, maybe due to increasing temperature or pollution, we may be on our way to losing other individuals. They're trying to see how we can prevent the loss of even more species in the same ecosystem. They're incredibly important as the base of the food web for aquatic systems. Researchers say losing more species of flies would really impact trout population levels and ultimately that ecosystem would probably start to degrade. Insects, because of their dominance and because of their diversity, play an incredibly important role in supporting and sustaining natural ecosystems. That's important to these guys, who depend on healthy river ecosystems. Fly fishers, they catch and release. They care about the population of the river. Um, they're very respectful to the river, and they're wanting to maintain the population so they could do it tomorrow. It's my favorite pastime, and a lot of people are getting into it, and so I think it would be pretty sad to have that lose its luster. From 2004 to 2007, volunteers relocated thousands of salmon fly from the Blacksmith Fork River a few miles away back here to the Logan River, hoping that they would once again call the Logan River home. The bugs never took hold and the effort failed. You might say the salmon fly is the canary in the coal mine when it comes to the health of this fishery for the bugs and the fish. Researchers continue to try and figure out what happened to the salmon fly.